Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to try out the Douglas DC-6 from PMDG and try it over Denmark because we have had the Nordics update and I want to see some of the scenery. So we'll be flying relatively low and slow to take a look at things with the DC-6. I'm very excited about the DC-6 because I'm a big prop liner enthusiast and uh, I feel very comfortable flying them generally speaking. Uh, especially the Constellation, which was the first plane I flew around the world in Flight Sim. That was in Flight Sim 9. So, yeah, I have not flown a PMDG plane before. This is a payware plane. It is an expensive payware, payware plane, as is the case for PMDG products in general. It is $60, though that's not really the most expensive thing from PMDG. So, uh, But PMDG has a long uh, history of providing quality products for Flight Sims, so... There is sort of a premium on that. Uh, it is a very complicated version of the DC-6, as we will soon see. Uh, I have not installed all the liveries. It has a, a utility to install the liveries with. I've got some of them. Uh, by default, it has the house liveries, and then once you use the utility the operations center, you can add others. And I've got Delta, KLM, and uh, Pan Am, and I think Scandinavian Airlines is probably the most appropriate for the Nordics, isn't it? So we'll go, it's taking a little bit of time to switch, but I think we'll go Scandinavian Airlines. Now, there has been a little bit of a problem with uh, multiplayer with this. I've looked on the forums and I had some crashes running the DC-6. I think it's because we were in close proximity with somebody else that was running the DC-6 because I was taking off from uh, San Francisco International at that point. I'm sure there's something that they will fix and it was something that was true of uh, add-on planes earlier on with flights in 2020. So I think it's probably related to the same reason why add-on planes generated crashes for uh, people early on. Again, this has just been released. So we are expecting a few glitches here and there. We've only got cabin crew. Uh, I'll show you in the cockpit there's an iPad-like thing uh, that you can adjust the passengers with. There are a lot of failures available, <laughs> uh, and this is really what you pay up for, is the fact that it uh, operates properly and fails properly. And so oil system, uh, leaks, uh, fuel pumps, magnetos, each cylinder can have a failure So on each engine. So you can see there's quite a lot of possibility for engine trouble here. And this is our flight path. We'll take off from Copenhagen and land at Alberg. And that is the plan. So, without further ado, let's take a look. Okay, we are not going to go through the startup procedure here. And uh, we can hear some of the sounds of the cockpit. It's loading the scenery around here, so let's wait a sec. Uh, but there are 20 tutorial videos for this plane on, the, on YouTube. And I have not watched them. I watched the first one and a little bit of the second, but it was covering mostly stuff that I knew. So uh, I tried flying it during uh, a live stream, and from that found the details that I was lacking and mostly uh, filled in the gaps. One of the gaps was there's a handle here. <laughs> um, let's see, not that, not that, that gust lock. So, gust lock is engaged. That has numerous effects. First of all, you might see there's a, a red bar on throttles 2 and 3 blocking the way for the advancement of throttles 2 and 3. You can see as I advance the throttle, only 1 and 4 go all the way forward. So I'm going to throttle back for a sec here. Um, that is part of gust lock. Another part of gust lock is that I am, I'm actually turning my controls right now and you can see that the rudder, ele elevator and ailerons are not turning. The gust lock basically seems to limit the authority. So if you want full range authority, you will want that disengaged. However, it doesn't seem necessary to disengage it. Uh, uh, I mean, I've actually taken off with it on, let me put it that way. Now the pad over here, and this isn't like a tutorial for this, uh, we, we pull out uh, this little hand and you can pull it over here. 
Okay, so yeah, this isn't a tutorial. I'm just showing some of the stuff that I have discovered in trying to fly it. Uh, there's probably a lot more detail if you actually watch the tutorials that they provided. Uh, so we have the ramp manager here with tow bar, wheel chocks, a whole bunch of that business, and opening the doors. And we have the fuel and load manager. Again, if you want some passengers, you can add some. I'll have one passenger just for the heck of it. There's this uh, this automatic flight engineer that allows you to set states, or artificial flight engineer, allows you to set states like take off, cruise. Mostly I want to do that stuff on my own. That's one reason I like prop liners is all the dials and the things I get to flick. So I, I'm not too fond of using that, and it's mostly gotten in the way. Uh, this is... Um, engine health and how long we've run it for. As you can see, I have run the plane for a little bit of time during my live streams. And uh, water alcohol quantity, auxiliary oil quantity, and anti-ice fluid. Interestingly, uh, at one point, we ran out of anti-ice fluid on on the plane, and it showed zero on here. It also showed zero up uh, at the anti-icing fluid indicator up there at the center of the screen. Then I started a new flight, and on the new flight, this indicator said zero, so that we would have to top it off. However, the upper dial there read it as full. So I'm not sure about that whole business, whether there's a disconnect there. Uh, also, uh, I uh, tried to destroy the plane uh, by running the engines at full blast. And uh, engines one and four read uh, had red indicators on this screen, which is the engine stress visualizer, which showed catastrophic stress range. I had uh, too much overboost and cylinder head temp, and so I was hoping that we'd have like a serious issue. But on that flight, we didn't, and I ended up faking a serious issue by pulling the fire extinguisher, this engine one CO2, uh, to kill engine one. That worked. Uh, that did kill engine one, but when I did kill engine one, the maintenance manager here still read engine health as green. So normally if you've killed an engine, yeah, the, the engine health might not be green, but I'm not sure. Maybe uh, fire extinguishing it does not actually hurt it. Uh, on the next flight though, uh, I having the experience that I could push the engines to the max without any problem, I pushed the engines to the max again, and after only a little while, Engine 1 and 4 quit. We still had the gust lock on, so engines 2 and 3 weren't running full. So that's an interesting thing. Uh, I don't know. Maybe that's the intended behavior. It's a little bit tough for me to tell whether that's the intended behavior or not. But anyway, right now we have low oil pressure. We could probably fix that by advancing the throttle a little bit. There we go. Carburetor temperature is cold. Uh, so that, that, that one is uh, cold or within icing range. I would like that to be not within icing range. I'm gonna put the de-icers on here and see if that works. But we'll just run, we'll just proceed as is and we'll see what happens. Uh, I'll take Gus Lock off for now. We'll reapply it later. Um, okay, there we go. That's disengaged. Interesting, e interesting feature. And so now when I move my control surfaces, we see proper rudder and aileron control. I can see the nice shiny textures. Tor Viking. Okay, so advancing throttle. Make sure overboost is, oil temperature is yellow, but for Take off, it's okay. Uh, I've, I've not advanced throttle all the way. I don't think I need to. So we'll be fine there. And brakes are off. You can see our manifold pressure is in the yellow region for all the engines. And we can take off. Gear up. Flaps up. And 
hand throttle down a bit to get the oil temperature happy. Oh, oil pressure is going down. It is a hefty feeling plane, as you would expect. It's got a very serious look to it. It's got a water cooling system and a supercharger. You can see the engine supercharger controls at the center of the screen there now. And of course we've got the cow flaps, that's a whole other business. I'm going to set those to climb myself here. But the supercharger requires the... Oh, we've already used a lot of anti-icing fluid. I don't know, I don't understand the carburetor ice situation at all. Maybe I should let the flight engineer handle that. But I could look at the notes, the tutorials to figure that out too. But yeah, we've got water to cool the engines when we're using the supercharger. As I said, there are minor quirks, but overall the quality is high. Since I like this particular kind of plane, I expect I will be spending a lot of time in it. And of course, uh, one reason for paying up is because it's the only one of its type on offer. It's not like somebody's making a constellation. We don't have a flurry of prop liners being made here. So I have to take that into consideration. I'm going to go down a bit. And there's some special buildings. I think I can see one basically at our nose right there. It looks like a stadium, uh, something sporting facility there. I'm gonna try adding gust lock on now. Oh. I think maybe I have to throttle down further to engage it. There we go. Otherwise that little interlock won't go down. Well, I'm actually gonna drop the HUD instruments here to give a better look at things. The DC-6 isn't very finicky anyway, so as long as we keep it within reasonable bounds, it'll be fine. So not the closest look we could give it, but there's the stadium. Yeah, whether going up or coming down, this is a very leisurely plane. Fast compared to some of the other propeller planes in the game, of course. But, you know, you can't just plunge down or go vertical or anything. Okay, so slightly lower altitude flyover of Copenhagen. Of course, the special buildings all sort of glisten. Uh, they have that tendency to them. So there we have one right there. I'm just uh, I'm keeping engines one and four just outside the yellow range on the manifold pressure right now, so you can see. And the limiter, thanks to the gust bar, is. Uh, keeping engines 2 and 3 fairly low. You can see the fuel flow indicator for engines 2 and 3 is very low. Basically a third of what is being consumed by 1 and 4. Yeah, the gust bar was one thing I didn't know about before that thankfully uh, I wanted to know how to remove that limiter on engines 2 and 3 so I looked on the forums and got my answer. The cruise speed for the plane was about 270 knots, so, or maybe even a little bit faster than that. But of course that was at altitude. Right now you can see the effect of the gust limiter. I, I'm, I'm actually full left on my joystick right now, and we're not turning very much. So that's an effect of the gust limiter, because basically my ailerons aren't moving. <laughs> so, uh... But then it suddenly goes like that. I don't know. I don't understand it entirely. Anyway, we're going to go down a bit. Oh, there it is. 
our right wing. I think that's the cathedral. We'll get a closer look. So yeah, you can, you can make turns with the Gusland and Ron, but it's just very sluggish about it. Okay, not really getting the front facade of the cathedral here. But there we are. I'm trying to get a backward facing view if that's safe. There it is. Very nice and cozy looking. I suppose since we are going on a long leg here, relatively long, Maybe we can try and get to a decent height and speed. Let's see. So, yeah, let's uh, let's ungust limit it again. And let's push it to its limits for a little while. Superchargers. You can see the manifold pressure peeking out <laughs> there. Uh, that's always fun. See, it, it's actually going to its max there. But then we get the overboost excessive. Let's see how much we have to knock it down before it doesn't read excessive anymore. Okay, now it's green. So that's at right at the peak of the yellow range. So it should be using our water to cool it. Uh, well, we might not need the water right now because I don't have it in the red. Ah, uh, let's push it to the red so that we use the water. Ah, no, it says green there for the four engines. Even though I'm at full throttle and everything. And we can also see peak fuel flow there. Oh, I'm adjusting the mixture. Now it's looking super classic. We do have some modern instruments up here, and that does let me see my ground speed there too. I find it strange with the superchargers on and pushing the engines so high. Well, I mean, the manifold pressure is not that high right now, so we're not actually using the water. Maybe I'm doing it right this time, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe this time I'm flying it properly and we don't even need to use the water and it's all got being green even though I'm at full throttle. Improvements have been made. Ground speed is 272 knots right now. We're going westward so uh, presumably the wind isn't super with us anyway. It's Possible it's helping, but I doubt it. Let me just turn the supercharger on one to demonstrate the difference. You can see it basically doubles the fuel flow and the manifold pressure goes up to 52-ish compared to 36 on the other engines. This does have multiple view presets. Control shift 2 is this. Control shift 3 is like this. Control shift 4 is like that. Control shift 5, like that. Control shift 6, overhead. Control shift 7, those panels. Control shift 8, these. Still didn't use much water. Control shift 9 is those panels to the right. And 0 is this side. So, and then 1 is back to normal. I was, it was interesting that it doesn't have an entirely separate engineering station. Like a lot of airliners would have that over to the left there, you know, where I'm looking, they'd have a whole engineer panel. Instead, they sort of had a, a jump seat here. <laughs> and I don't know how that works out, but... I mean, there, that's maybe where the engineer sits so a strange arrangement 
Now, the Concorde, of course, has it off to the left there, and no, oh, sorry, on the right, and so does the Constellation. Is this is this series park really fancy? Do we need to go low to take a look at it, or is it another stadium? I think it's that stadium there. I can sort of see it to our right. Let's see. Has it already accepted? Oh yeah, we're already on series to Lego House. All right, we're gonna proceed to Lego House. If I put the throttle too low, it does have a little warning beep, so I'm gonna do that. Maybe you can hear that warning. So, can't put the throttle lower than this, apparently, if I believe the beep, which I do. Not really a beep, a warning tone. Looks nice in clouds. <laughs> Looks nice all the time. Oh, somewhat of a clearing over this airport. I've taken off from here before to take a look at Lego House. Before they made it a special feature though, so it was just the uh, photo scenery. Oh, uh, it's that there at our right wing. Alright, very multicolored and everything. Striking, certainly striking. Game isn't generating enough gusts for a gust limiter. <laughs> Okay, we are descending into Min at Sea, and I trust there's an airport around there. Overall, the weather is not great for sightseeing anyway, so we might as well land for now. We will continue our tour of the Nordics at another time. Uh, it's this little complex over here. It's mostly cars. <laughs> I, it's got to take a slower... We're, we're going to need a car to see what the heck that is. Alright. Yeah, that is, that is too small a feature for us to get a good look at in here. It shakes pretty seriously if you reduce the RPM below 1500. And now it doesn't give the warning beep on the uh, when I put the manifold pressure low. Because I've got the gear down, I guess. I feel like I'm going way fast though. I don't know how to slow down. <laughs> it shakes a lot when I do. This is actually my first proper landing with this. After all, I lost engines on the previous times. Uh, come on. Okay, uh, let's stop, stop. Ah, I'm using the extra a little bit. I took extra time to get it down. Okay, well. Uh, there's no taxiway over here. Well, this is an old style thing. I'm sure it'll be fine on the grass. Right? Right. And I don't think I fit on this taxiway, do I? Uh, nice squeaking. Barely. Alright, so with that... I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.